Test. Test. Page 131, if you have a songbook in your pews. Slava Jesus Christu. Good evening to everyone. God bless you for coming to our first evening of the of our uh, parish uh, Lenten mission. Uh, we begin with with vespers uh, this evening. Tomorrow at seven o'clock, we will also have on the feast of the Annunciation. We'll have the Divine Liturgy, Eucharistic Liturgy, uh, to which you're also attending. Father Daniel Bach will be, will be preaching both evenings. Uh, also, he is available for confession. Obviously, we're aware of that already. And so during the Vespers as well, of course, you uh, take advantage of this opportunity. Father Daniel said he'll also spend some time after uh, for those that uh, still want to come forward for, for the sacrament of, of, of penance, of reconciliation, confession. And uh, also, don't forget afterwards, you're invited downstairs for a little bit of refreshment, a little bit of spiritual fellowship. 
And uh, if you'd like to come down, please do. The ladies are preparing a, a beautiful uh, little bit of a refreshment for us all. And uh, also, uh, again, and, and Father Daniel will be hearing confessions. After I'll also join uh, the uh, help with that as well. I'll be in the sacristy here to, the, um, uh, to, to your right uh, for confessions as well. And, um, and we will remain here as long as, as needed afterwards today and tomorrow as well. That's a big part also of our mission is our own spiritual renewal. So we want to take advantage of that. Hopefully as you enter the church on the, uh, on the ba- at the back, as you pick up these two copies, one is the text of the Vespers and the other is the, uh, are the special parts for the Feast of the Annunciation, which we'll be taking as well. Please do join in uh, singing uh, as, as best you can, and um, if you're familiar with it, and uh, we have some that are helping us lead, lead the Vespers today, and uh, again, but certainly do join in. And uh, we'll follow this for the most part. You might see a few uh, oddities, but uh, we do what we can with the personnel that we have. And so uh, uh, it'll be a beautiful prayer all the same uh, to our Lord. So we begin on the, uh, with the order of great vespers on the inside of the larger handout. Blessed is our God, always, now, and forever, and ever. Amen. Glory be to you, O God, glory be to you. Heavenly King, Advocate, Spirit of Truth, who are everywhere present and fill all things, treasury of blessings, bestower of life, come and dwell within us, cleanse us of all that defiles us, and, O good one, save our souls. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and forever and ever, amen. Trinity most holy, have mercy on us. Cleanse us of our sins, O Lord. Pardon our transgressions, O Master. Look upon our weaknesses and heal them, O Holy One, for the sake of your name. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and forever and ever, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and forever and ever. Come, let us bow and worship before the King, our God. Come, let us bow and worship before Christ, the King, our God. Come, let us bow and worship and fall down before the very Lord Jesus Christ, our King and our God. Bless the Lord, O my soul. You are very great, O Lord, my God. Clothed in pomp and brilliance, arrayed with light as with a cloak. Stretching out the sky as a tent cloth, Covering your lofty walls with water. You make the clouds your conveyance, you surge on the wings of the wind. You make spirits your messengers, and flaming fires your attendants. You settle the earth on its firm foundation, it shall stand unmoved from age to age. The abyss covers it like a garment, Water stand over the mountains. At your rebuke they take to flight. At the peal of your thunder they will fear. They hurdle the hills and run down the dales to the place you have chosen for them. You have set up a boundary not to be passed. They shall never return to cover the earth. 
Down in the gullies you make springs to rise, water shall go down between the mountains. They shall give drink to the beasts of the field, asses will seek them to quench their thirst. The birds of the sky will abide by them, from among the rocks they will raise their song. From your lofty halls you refresh the mountains, the earth shall be fed with the fruit of your work. You make green pastures for the cattle, and food plants for the service of all, so that bread may be brought forth from the earth, and wine that gladdens man's heart. So that oil may put a gleam upon his face, and that bread may strengthen the heart of all. The tree of the plain will be satisfied, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. The sparrow will build her nests in them, and the herons will call them their home. To the deer belong high mountains, to rodents the shelter of the rocks. You have made the moon to mark the seasons, the sun knows the time of its setting. You establish darkness, and it is night. Wherein the forest creatures prowl around. Young lions roar for their prey and call out to God for their meat. Man. They will come together and lay themselves down in their dens. Man will go out to his labor and work until eventide. How great are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have wrought them all. The earth is filled with your creatures, even the wide and open sea itself. Within it are countless creeping things, living beings small and large. Upon it there are ships sailing, and that great beast you made to have fun. All of them look up to you to give them their food in due time. You provide and they gather up, you open your hand and they are full. You hide your face and they cringe, you suspend their breath and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your breath and they live, you renew the face of the earth. May the Lord's glory endure forever, may the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks upon the earth and makes it quake, he touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God as long as I last. Would that my thoughts be pleasing to him, I will rejoice in the Lord. May sinners vanish from the earth, and may the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The sun knows the time of its setting. You establish darkness, and it is night. How great are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have wrought them all. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to you, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to you, O God. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace throughout the world, for the well-being of God's holy churches, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy church and for all who enter it with faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our most holy, universal Pontiff Francis, Pope of Rome, our most blessed Sviatoslav, the Slaw, our most reverend Metropolitan Lawrence, the reverend priest of the diaconate in Christ, and all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our nation under God, for our government, and for all the military, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city and for every city and country and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have for favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the seafarers, the travelers, for the sick and the suffering, for those held captive, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may be delivered from all tribulation, wrath, and misfortune, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help and save, have mercy, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Remembering our most holy and immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Mother of God, the ever Virgin Mary, together with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord. 
For all glory, honor, and worship befit you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen. Blessed is the man, alleluia, who has not walked in the counsel of the wicked. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Just, but the way we of the wicked shall be lost. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Serve the Lord with fear, exult in him with trembling. Alleluia, alleluia. Upon your people, your blessing. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help and save, have mercy, protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Remembering our most holy and immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Mother of God, the ever Virgin Mary, together with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For you are a good and loving God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen. O oh Lord, I have cried to you, hear me, hear me, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, I have cried to you, hear me, receive the voice of my prayer when I call upon you. Hear me, O Lord. Let my prayer rise like incense before you. The lifting up of my hands as an evening sacrifice. Hear me, O Lord. Set a guard, O Lord, before my mouth and a portal around my lips. Incline my heart away from evil dealings, from finding excuse for sinful deeds. In company with those who work iniquity, let me not partake of what they choose. May the just chase me with justice and reprove me. May the oil of the wicked never touch my head. Yet even then shall I pray for their welfare. Their rulers were swallowed near the rock. My words will be heard, for they were sweet as a lump of clay broken on the ground, so their bones were strewn near the grave. To you, Lord, O oh Lord, my eyes are lifted up. In you have I hoped, let not my soul be lost. Keep me from the snare that was set for me, and from the stumbling blocks of the wicked. The wicked shall fall into their own nets, while I remain alone until I can escape. With my voice I cried to the Lord. With all my voice I him I implored the Lord. Before him I pour out my supplications. 
Before him I declare my distress. When my breath was escaping me, then you knew my path. On the road upon which I was walking, they set up snares for me. I took to my look to my right and observed there was no one friendly to me. Even flight was denied me. There was no one to care for my life. I cried to you, O Lord, and said, You are my hope, my share in the land of the living. Listen to my supplication, for I am laid very low. Deliver me from my oppressors, for they have overwhelmed me. Lead my soul forth from prison, that I may give thanks to your name. The just shall gather around me, when you have been good to me. Go to your extra sheets now, please. <clears throat> Out of the depths I cry to you, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, hear my voice. Lord, you have enabled us to kiss your ever-blessed cross, by which you have saved us. We praise your goodness of heart, and we beseech you. Restore to us all the joy of your salvation, Savior. Grant us to behold in penitence your holy sufferings and resurrection. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my prayer. You injured you death on the cross, destroying death by resurrecting the dead with your life-bearing word. Now I beseech you to give life to my dead and soul. Grant me compunction, deliverance from all evils. During the holy days of your fast lover of mankind. If you mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you forgiveness is that you may be revered. You have counted us worthy to behold and embrace your holy cross with joy. Now we entreat you, God, our Savior, enable us to, so to attain your most pure sufferings by being strengthened through fasting, so that we may bow down and sing of your crucifixion, the spear, the reeds, and the sponge, by which, which you have taken, taken us from death, returning us to the joyous life of paradise. Lover of mankind, we now thankfully glorify you. I have waited for you as you have commanded my soul, patiently relies on your promise, for it has trusted in the Lord. Gabriel stood in your presence, O Holy Virgin, and revealed the eternal plan to you. He greeted you and announced, Rejoice, O earth that has not been sown. Rejoice, O burning bush that was not consumed. Rejoice, so oh unsearchable depth. Rejoice, so oh bridge which leads to heaven. O oh high ladder which Jacob saw. Rejoice, so oh vessel of divine manna. Rejoice, so oh invocation of Adam. The Lord is with you. From the morning watch until night, let Israel trust in the Lord. Gabriel stood in your presence, O Holy Virgin, and revealed the eternal plan to you. He 
greeted you and announced. Rejoice, O earth that has not been sown. Rejoice, O burning bush that was not consumed. Rejoice, O unsearchable depth. Rejoice, O bridge which leads to heaven. O high ladder which Jacob saw. Rejoice, O vessel of divine manna. Rejoice, O invocation of Adam. The Lord is with you. For with the Lord there is mercy, and with him there is plentiful redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all its iniquities. The blameless maiden said to the captain of the heavenly hosts, You appear to me as a mortal, and your words go beyond human thought. You have said that God is with me, and that he shall take up a boat in my womb. Tell me then, how am I to become a holy temple for the infinite one? <clears throat> the Lord who rides on the cherubim, do not mislead me with deceit, for I have known no pleasure and have not approached wedlock. Therefore, how shall I give birth to a child? Praise the Lord, all the nations. Proclaim his glory, all you people. The blameless maiden said to the captain of the heavenly host, You appear to me as a mortal. And your words go beyond human thought. You have said that God is with me, and that he shall take up a boat in my womb. Tell me then, how am I to become a holy temple for the infinite one? The Lord who rides on the cherubim, do not mislead me with deceit. For I have known no pleasure and have not approached wedlock. Therefore, how shall I give birth to a child? Strong is the love of the Lord for us. Eternally will his truth endure. The archangel then said to her, Whenever God wills, the order of nature is overcome, and that which is beyond human power is accomplished. Therefore, O most pure and everlasting one, believe my true words. She then cried out, saying, let it now be done to me according to your word, and I will give birth to the one who is without flesh. He will take flesh from me, so that by the union he may raise the human race to the original dignity. For he alone is all powerful. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and forever and ever. Amen. The Archangel Gabriel was sent from heaven to bring to the Virgin glad tidings of her conception. When he came to now. He marveled at the miracle and thought to himself, How is it that he whom the heavens cannot comprehend is now being born of a virgin? The one heaven for a throne and earth for a footstool, 
is being enclosed within a virgin's womb. He upon whom the six-winged seraphim and the many-eyed cherubim cannot gaze wills to become incarnate of her by a single word. The word of God is at hand. Then why do I stand by and not say to the virgin, Rejoice, O full of grace, the Lord is with you. Rejoice, O pure virgin and maiden bride. Rejoice, O mother of the life. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Wisdom stand right. Go back to where it says the evening hymn, Tranquilite. Tranquilite of the holy glory of the immortal heavenly holy blessed Father, O Jesus Christ, as we come upon the sunset, as we see the evening light, we sing to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. At all times you are worthy of being hymned by joyful voices. O Son of God, you are the giver of life. For this the whole world purifies you. Let us be attentive. Peace be with all wisdom. Let us be attentive. The very bottom of page two on your loose sheets. Pray and make your vows and make your vows before, before the Lord our God. In Judah God is known, his name is great in Israel. Pray and make your vows and make your vows before, before the Lord our God. Wisdom. A reading from the book of Genesis. Let us be attentive. These were the tribes of Noah's sons, according to their genealogy in their nations, and from these the coastal nations were divided on the earth after the flood. Now the whole earth was one language, and one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the sand of Shinar and dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them with fire. They had brick for stone and asphalt for mortar. They also said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower, whose top will reach to heaven. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the sons of men built. Then the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one race and one language, and they have begun to do what they said. Now they will not fail to accomplish what they have undertaken. Come, let us go to go down there and confuse their language so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city and the tower. Therefore its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the languages of the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Wisdom. A 
A reading from the book of Proverbs. Let us be attentive. Brethren, instruction removes poverty and dishonor, and he who gives head, heed to, to rebukes will be glorified. The desires of the godly gladden the soul, but the works of the ungodly are far from knowledge. He who walks with the wise shall be wise, but he who walks with those without discernment will be known. Evil things shall pursue sinners, but good things will overtake the righteous. A good man will inherit sons of sons, but the wealth of the ungodly will be stored up for the righteous. The righteous shall live in wealth many years, but the unrighteous will be destroyed suddenly. He who spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves, his, loves him instructs him with care. A righteous man eats and satisfies his soul, but the souls of the ungodly are in want. Wise women build houses, but those without discernment destroy them with their hands. He who walks uprightly fears the Lord, but he who is crooked in his ways will be dishonored. From the mouth of a man without discernment comes a road of arrogance, but the lips of a wise man guard themselves. Where there are no oxen, the stalls are clean, but where there are <coughs> abundant crops, the strength of an ox is evident. A faithful witness does not lie, but an unrighteous witness kindles lies. You will seek wisdom in the company of evil men, and you will f not find it. But perception is easily found with the discerning. Wis wisdom. A reading from the book of Genesis. Let Dear us be attentive. Dear brethren, Jacob left, left Beersheba and went toward Haran, and he came to a certain place and stayed there that night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under the he his head and laid down in the place to sleep. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your descendants, and your descendants shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And by you and your descendants shall all the families of the earth bless themselves. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done that of which I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. End of reading. Wisdom. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. Let us be attentive. When they have completed these days, then from the eighth day onward, the priests shall offer upon the altar your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, and I will accept you, says the Lord God. Then he brought me back to the outer gate of the sanctuary, which faces east, and it was shut. And he said to me, This gate shall remain shut. It shall not be opened, and no one shall enter by it. For the Lord, the God of Israel, has entered by it. Therefore it shall remain shut. Only the pr prince may sit in it to eat bread before the Lord. He shall enter by way of the vestibule of the gate, and shall go out by the same way. Then he brought me by way of the north gate to the front of the temple, and I looked, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the temple of the Lord, and I fell upon my face. 
Wisdom. Reading from the book of Proverbs. Let us be attentive. Wisdom has built her house. She has set up her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her beasts. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her maids to call from the highest places in the town. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. To him who is without sense, she says, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Leave simpleness and live and walk in the way of insight. He who corrects a scoffer gets himself abused, and he who reproves a wicked man incurs injury. Do not reprove a scoffer, or he will hate you. Reprove a wise man, and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One. Let us say with our whole soul and our whole mind, let us say, Lord, have mercy. Almighty Lord God of our fathers, we pray you hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, in the greatness of your compassion, we pray you hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We also pray for our most holy universal pontiff, Francis, Pope of Rome, our most blessed, is yet the slower, most reverend, rich of all the Lords. For those who serve and have served in this holy church, for our spiritual fathers and for all our brethren in Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. We also pray for our nation under God, for our government, and for all the military. We also pray for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, Lord God, in your love and mercy, have mercy on them and bring an end to this horrible war. And according to your holy will, hear us and have mercy. also pray for all the uh, the leaders, um, world leaders that have influence upon this uh, terrible war. Lord, we ask you to move their hearts and souls with your truth and justice, compassion and boldness. Lord, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We also pray for those uh, people who are here present who have gathered here for this mission, Lord, we ask you also to grant us the grace and the help that we all need for our salvation. And um, as we continue this earthly journey, Lord, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We also ask you, Lord, to bless um, the consecration which will take place tomorrow. May it be efficacious to all. May um, it be successful in moving the hearts and souls of all humanity according to your holy will and uh, for the conversion of souls, for the uh, renewal in the, of those the, who are your followers, Lord, and to grant a moment of peace in your world. Hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for those here present who await your great and bountiful mercies for those who have been kind to us and for all Orthodox Christians. Lord, For 
For you are a merciful and loving God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, keep us this evening without sin. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our fathers, and praised and glorified is your name forever. Amen. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us, because we have set our hope in you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your commandments. Blessed are you, O Master. Make me understand your commandments. Blessed are you, O Holy One. Enlighten me with your laws. O Lord, your mercy endures forever. Do not despise the work of your hands. It is proper to praise you, and hymns belong to you. Glory belongs to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit now and forever and ever. Amen. Let us complete our evening prayer to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help and save, have mercy, protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. That this whole evening may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. For the forgiveness and remission of our sins and offenses, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. For all that is good and beneficial for our souls and for peace for the world, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. That we may spend the rest of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. Grant for a Christian end to our lives, one that is painless and ashamed and peaceful, and for a good defense of the awesome tribunal of Christ, let us ask the Lord. This, o Lord. Remembering our, uh, our most holy and immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Mother of God, and ever Virgin Mary, together with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For you, our God, are gracious, and you love mankind, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. Bow your heads to the Lord. To you, O Lord. O Lord, our God, you lowered the heavens when you came down for the salvation of the human race. Now look upon your servants and upon your inheritance, for they have bowed their heads their heads to you, the judge both awesome and loving. They do not await human help, but look for your mercy and are ready to receive your salvation. Guard them at all times this evening and tonight against the all enemies, against the devil's assaults, against vain thoughts and evil dreams. May the might of your kingdom be blessed and exalted, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen. The special parts, page three in the middle, where it says litia. In the sixth, in, in the, the sixth, sixth month, month, the, leader, month, of the he leader of the heavenly armies was sent to you, holy virgin, to announce the word of salvation to you and say, Rejoice, O woman, full of grace, the Lord is with you. You shall give birth to the Son who was begotten of the Father before all ages. He is the one who will save his people from their sins. In the sixth month, the archangel Gabriel was sent from he he heaven to Nazareth, the village of Galilee. To bring the good news of joy to the virgin. Drawing near to her, he cried out, saying, Rejoice!
rejoice, O woman full of grace, the Lord is with you. Rejoice, O vessel of the infinite nature, for your womb contains the one whom even the heavens could not contain. Rejoice, O holy virgin, through whom Adam is called back to paradise. Eve is freed from bondage and the world filled with joy. For in you the human race now rejoices. The archangel Gabriel was sent by God from heaven to the spotless virgin in Nazareth of Galilee to joyfully announce her marvelous conception. The bodiless servant was sent to the living city and the spiritual door to reveal the coming of the Master and his descent among us. The heavenly soldier was sent to the living palace of glory to prepare a dwelling place for her eternal creator. Drawing near to her, he cried out, saying, Rejoice, O throne of fire, which surpasses the chariot of the Lord in glory. Rejoice, O heavenly seat of our King. Rejoice, O precious chalice and uncut mountain, for the fullness of the divinity comes to dwell in you. Through the good will of the Father and the operation of the Most Holy Spirit, rejoice, O woman full of grace, the Lord is with you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen. Today, Gabriel announces the good news to the woman full of grace. Rejoice, O virgin, who has not known wedlock. Do not fear the strangeness of my appearance, for I am an archangel. Formerly the serpent was a Grieve to weave, but now it is with great joy that I announce. You shall remain a virgin, and yet you shall give birth to the Lord. Save your people, O God, and bless your inheritance. Visit your world with your mercy and generosities. <clears throat> Raise up the strength of Christian peoples and send down upon us your abundant mercy. Through the prayers of the most pure lady of the Mother Back of God, the ever Virgin Mary, Splitia. through the might of the precious and life-giving After cross, Litia. through the protection of the honorable heavenly and corporeal powers, of the honorable glorious prophet, forerunner and baptizer John, of the holy, glorious and praiseworthy apostles of our fathers among the saints, of uh, the great universal teachers and hierarchs, Basil the Great, Gregory the Theologian, and John Chrysostom, of the Father among the saints, Nicholas the Wonder Worker, Archbishop of Mira and Lysia, of the holy Cyril and Methodius, equals to the apostles, teachers of the Slavs, of the Grand Prince Volodymyr and the Grand Princess Olha, equals to the Apostles, and of our Holy Priest Martyr Yosefat, uh, Archbishop of Polotsk, by the prayers of the Holy Martyrs, Confessors and Bishops uh, Nikolai, the Exarch of uh, Volinia and Wonderworker Hrihori of Sanislavio, Josephat uh, and uh, Theodore Nikita, Vasil of Lutsk and an Elder of Winnipeg, Hrihori of Paramishram, Ivan and Simeon, Bishop and Passion Bearer of our Martyred Monks and Fathers, Leonti, Exarch of Russia and Clement, the Archimandrite of Uni of Severin, and Joachim Vitali, innocently slain in Drohobich and Zenobil, and Ivan, Passion Bearers of the Priest Martyrs Andri, Mikolai, Roman, Petro, Oleksii, of the Priest Martyr Emilian, Pastor of and Prisoners of Majdanek, the Priest Martyr Mikola, and uh, the cantor, <coughs> Voldemir, passion bearers of Stach, of the martyred nuns Teresikia, Olympia, and Laurentia, of Vincent and those martyred with him in Pratulin, 
Uh, Nikita, John, uh, Constantine, Michael, Anufrius, Philip, Maxim, Daniel, Constantine, Bartholomew, Luke, and Ignatius, and all the martyred men and women of the land of uh, Russia, Ukraine, of the North American martyrs, uh, uh, Jean, Noel, Anthony, Charles, Isaac, Gabriel, Rene, and Jean, and of the holy, glorious, and victorious martyrs of our venerable and God-bearing fathers, Anthony and Theodosius, of the monastery of the caves of Kiev, of our venerable God, Father John, of Philadelphia, Damien the Leper, of Molokai and Brother Andre of Montreal, our Venerable Mother Yosefata, of our Venerable Mothers of Canada, Margaret de Cateri, and Marguerite, and uh, the Venerable Mothers of France, uh, Francis, Elizabeth Anne, Rose, Philippine, Catherine, and the Teresa of the Holy and Gracious Ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, and of all the saints, we beseech you, O all merciful Lord, hear us sinners, praying to you, and have mercy. Господи, помилуй, Господи, помилуй, Господи, помилуй, Господи, помилуй, Господи, помилуй, Господи, We also pray for our most holy universal Pontiff Francis, Pope of Rome, and for our most blessed and Svetos Larmos, the Lord God grant them health and salvation, ever directing them and assisting them in all they do, and for our most reverend Metropolitan Lords, our spiritual fathers and mothers, and all of our brothers and sisters in Christ, and for every Christian soul that is afflicted and maltreated and in need of God's mercies and help for the protection of this city and for those who live here, for the peace and serenity of the whole world, for the welfare of God's holy churches, for the salvation and assistance of our fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, who with diligence and in fear of the Lord labor and serve, for the repose, blessed memory, and remission of sins of our departed loved ones of the Orthodox faith all over the world, for the deliverance of captives and for those uh, taking part in these holy services and for all who have, in, have served in this holy church, let us pray. Hear us, O God, our Savior, hope of uh, all bounds of the earth and those far away at sea. In your graciousness, be merciful to us sinners, O Master, for you are a merciful God, and you love mankind, and we glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. Bow your heads to the Lord. To O most merciful Master, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, through the prayers of our most dear Lady, the Mother of God, and ever Virgin Mary, through the might of the precious and life-giving cross, through the prayers, um, uh, make our prayer acceptable, grant us the remission of our transgressions, protect us with the shadow of your wings, drive far from us every foe and adversary, and make our life uh, peaceful, O Lord, have mercy on us and on your world, and save our souls, for you are gracious and you love mankind. Oh. The Smaller Handouts, page 4. In the sixth month, the archangel was sent to the pure virgin, and with his greeting rejoice, he brought good tidings that the deliverer would come forth from her, and so accepting his salutation with faith. She conceived to the preternal God, 
who was pleased to become an ineffably for the salvation of our souls. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, proclaim his help day by day. The Theotokos heard a voice she knew not. When the archangel brought her the glad tidings of the Annunciation, and accepting the salutation with faith, she conceived you the preternal God. Therefore, in great rejoicing, we also cry to you, O God, who without change has been made flesh from her, grant peace to the world and to our souls, great mercy. Sing a new song to the Lord, sing to the Lord, all the earth. Lo, our restoration is now made manifest to us. God is ineffably united to men. At the words of the archangel, error is laid low. For the virgin receives joy, and the things of the earth have become he heaven. The world is loosened from the ancient curse. Let the creation rejoice exceedingly and raise its voice to sing. Our Lord, our Maker and Deliverer, glory to you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen. Today there come glad tidings of joy. It is the feast of the Virgin. Things below are joined to things above. Adam is renewed, Eve set free from her ancient sorrow. And the tabernacle of the human nature, which the Lord took upon himself, making divine the substance he assumed, is consecrated as a temple of God. O mystery, the manner of emptying is unknown. The fashion of his conceiving is ineffable. An angel ministers at the wonder, a virgin womb receives the Son. The Holy Spirit is sent down, the Father on high gives his consent. And so the covenant is brought to pass by common counsel. In him and through him are we saved. And together with Gabriel, let us cry aloud to the Virgin. Rejoice, you who are full of grace, the Lord is with you. From you has Christ our God and our salvation taken human nature, rising it up to himself. Pray to him that our souls may be saved. No, oh, oh, Master, you have kept Song your promise. Let your servant go in peace. With my own eyes I have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. Holy God, Святый Божий, Святый Крепкий, Святый Бессмертный, помилуй нас. Святый Божий, Святый Крепкий, Святый Бессмертный, помилуй нас. Святый Божий, Святый Крепкий, Святый Бессмертный, помилуй нас. Слава и Сыну и Святому Духови. И ныне во всех частях на веки вечные. Аминь. Не святая Троица, помилуй нас, Господи, очисти грехи наши. Владыку прости беззакония наши, святый посвяти истины нам очи наши, имени Твоего ради. Господи помилуй, Господи помилуй, Господи помилуй. Славу и Сыну и Святому Духови. И не ни во всех части не веки вечны, аминь. Отче наш, что есть на небесах, нехай святить имя Твое. 
Нехай прийде царство Твоє, нехай буде воля Твоя, як на небі, так і на землі. Хліб наш насущний дай нам сьогодні, і прости нам провини наші, як і ми прощаємо винуватцям нашим, і не веди нас у спокусу, але визволи нас від лука. Бо Твої цар свої сили і славу Ця і Сини Святого Духа, Нині посек час і не віки вічні. Амінь. The Son of God becomes the Virgin Son, and Gabriel brings the tidings of praise. With him let us also cry to the Mother of God, Rejoice, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Today is the crown of our salvation, And the unfolding of the eternal mystery, the Son of God becomes the Virgin Son, and Gabriel brings the tidings of grace. With him let us also cry to the Mother of God, Rejoice, full of grace, the Lord is with you. of our salvation and the unfolding of the eternal mystery. The Son of God becomes the virgin Son and Gabriel brings the tidings of praise. With him let us also cry to the Mother of God. Rejoice, full of grace, the Lord is Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, who blessed the five loaves and fed the five thousand, bless these loaves, this wheat, wine, and oil, and multiply them in this city and in the whole world, and sanctify all the faithful who shall partake of them. For it is you, O Christ, our God, who bless and sanctify all things, and we glorify you with your eternal Father and your all holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord now and forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord now and forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord now and forever. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall constantly be in my mouth. My soul shall glory in the Lord. Let the meek hear and rejoice. Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. I approach the Lord and be enlightened and be, and your face shall never be shamed. The poor cried out and the Lord heard them and delivered them from all their afflictions. The angel of the Lord will set up camp around those who fear the Lord and save him. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed is the one who hopes in him. Fear the Lord, all you his saints, for there is no privation for those who fear him. The rich have become poor and hungry, but those who seek the Lord shall not want any good. The blessed may be the Lord. The blessing of the Lord be upon you with his grace and love for mankind always now and forever and ever. Amen. Wisdom. Give the blessing. Blessed is the one who is. Blessed is Christ our God always now and forever and ever. Amen. God strengthen the Catholic faith forever and ever. O most holy mother of God, save us. More honorable than the cherubim, and by far more glorious than the seraphim. Ever a virgin, you gave birth to God the Word. O true mother of God, we magnify you. 
Glory be to you, Christ God, our hope. Glory be to you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Give the blessing. Christ, our true God, through the prayers of his Immaculate Mother, whose feast of her Annunciation, we celebrate today of the holy, glorious, and all praise with the apostles of our venerable and God-bearing fathers and of Nikita the first exarch of Winnipeg, and Vasil, elder of Winnipeg, of uh, all the saints will have mercy on us and save us, for he is good and loves mankind. Love Jesus Christ. God bless you for coming. God bless you for this, these beautiful vespers. Really, really uh, inspiring and uh, soul lifting. Um, with no further ado, uh, I'm glad that you took advantage of uh, the opportunity for confessions. Again, if there's somebody either immediately afterwards uh, or, else, or else after our little bit of a fellowship down below, we still would like to take advantage of the confessional, please do so. At this time, we're very happy and very pleased and blessed to have uh, Father Daniel Bach of the Order of St. Basil the Great uh, to be here to preach our first uh, uh, evening of our parish Lenten mission. Mi oca i syn, iž toho ducha mín. Sláva Jsou se Rostu. Sláva Jsou. 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 Sl I'm just so uh, pleased by that. I remember when the war started, I was thinking to myself all the time, I thought, you know, we just have to consecrate this R Ukraine, you know, and Russia to our Immaculate Heart of Mary. It was just sitting in my head all the time. And then when the Pope said he's going to do it, I thought, this is wonderful. <laughs> and then uh, now that he's going to do that tomorrow, just inside of me, just, I, I, it's a, just a feeling, can't put much on that, but it's a feeling that I think something wonderful is going to happen. I think it's going to give us a lot of hope, and, um, and hopefully it'll be just like when um, Pope John Paul II consecrated the whole world to our Immaculate Heart of Mary, uh, and, um, and there was the falling of the, of the uh, communist wall. I think something wonderful is going to happen also at this time as well. So we keep on praying for that. What I'd like to go through today is, um, since it's the Feast of the Annunciation, I'd like to go over the texts of the Feast of the Annunciation. So to see what the words are there and see what they mean. Because when you go through the text um, uh, prayerfully, it just, a whole new world opens up and it makes so much sense, you know, and I just, that's why I'm, I'm so in love with scripture that I always go, it's my go-to part in, in preaching, is always to go to the scripture. So we see at the beginning of this Annunciation, it says this, Luke chapter 1, verse 26, it says, in the sixth month, 
the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man. So six months, so what is a six month? What, what's that all about? Well, earlier we see that, uh, our, that Elizabeth, that's a relative of Mary, she was told that she would receive a, 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 give birth to a child. She was uh, elderly and she couldn't conceive and then miraculously she could. So now she's six months pregnant, right? So it says in the sixth month, so six months, Elizabeth is pregnant. And now the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. So the angel Gabriel, where do we get him from? If we take a look in the Old Testament, the angel Gabriel had approached the prophet Daniel many, many, many years ago. Actually, it's uh, seven times 70 years. So it's 490 years earlier, the angel Gabriel came and appeared to the prophet Daniel. And the angel Gabriel said to prophet Daniel that the Messiah will come in seven times 70 years. So it's a 490 years. So here at this time, if we look at the timetable, uh, 490 years later, the angel Gabriel now appears to Mary. She comes to Mary. So just to hear the name Gabriel is come, we know that the time has been fulfilled when the Messiah is going to come. So in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to the city, a city in Galilee named Nazareth. Now, what is so special about Nazareth? Well, they say that Nazareth was probably one of the most ancient of, it's not, it wasn't even a city, it was a, a, a village, really. One of the most ancient of villages in the Holy Land. They say something even perhaps as long as maybe 1000 BC, there was a, a people living there. And, but we know that throughout the, the time, throughout the history, the northern ten tribes that lived in that area, uh, they were very unfaithful. The prophets came to them and says, unless you straighten up, you know, the Assyrian's going to come and attack you and is going to th throw you out. You're going to lose your land. Of course, they never uh, repented. And the Assyrians came and took all the people from those northern area and intermingled them with five other nations. And then those people were later on called the Samaritans. So what happens is that this city, Nazareth, or this village of Nazareth, was completely gutted out. It was, it was abandoned. And then what happened was that the northern two tribes, the, uh, the Judea, uh, of Judah and Benjamin, they too started to um, wane in their faith. And the prophets came to them as well and says, unless you smarten up and come back into the faith, uh, you too will be... Uh, expelled from the country, from the land. And uh, the uh, southern two tribes, they were unfaithful as well. And then the Lord allowed the Babylonians to come. They came down and conquered the, the, uh, Judah and Benjamin and exiled them out into Babylon. And there they stayed for a number of years. Um, and if, I think it was a five something, 538 BC, they were now in Babylon. So all the Jews have been taken out of the Holy Land. Um, then what happened was that the um, uh, Persians conquered the Babylonians and the Persian king Cyrus said to the, Bab to the Israelites there, you guys can go back to your promised land. Not very many people went back to the promised land. They kind of stuck around Babylon. And one of the uh, clans that was there were the clans from the tribe of, uh, of David. You know, they would stick together as clans of groups and they would marry into each other as well. The people of David would marry each other, or the people of David, the clan, right, or the tribes. So we see that there is this clan or tribe of King David. And why was it so important that they um, uh, preserved themselves and, and kept the family line and the family tree? It was because the prophecy was that the Messiah will come from the line of David, the line of King David. So now the Holy Land is empty, and here is this little clan that's living in Babylon of the tribe of David. So they knew that someday they will have to go back to the Holy Land, and from them a Messiah will be born. 
So these people, after uh, uh, maybe it was closer to about 100 uh, BC, um, uh, this clan decided to go back into, uh, into the Holy Land. And they went into two different little cities. One was in Assyria, uh, it's called Kochba. Kochba means the, the village of the star. They call themselves the village of the star because uh, um, Balaam, he had a prophecy and he says that the king will come from this star, this image of the star. So they figured we call our town the uh, Kochba or the village of the star, perhaps the, the Messiah the, from the line of King David will come from this town. And there's another group that didn't go so far up as Assyria, but they went into the place of Galilee to a, a little village that was abandoned. They renamed it Nazareth. And Nazareth means uh, from the shoot, line of the shoot, from, so the, like the, from the stump of a tree. So they say that there was also a, 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 a prophecy speaking that the line of David will follow from a, a, the, the roots of the tree. So the tree would be cut down, you know, the Babylonians captured all the Israelites, put them into Babylon. So now nobody knows who the king is, it's cut down. But they say a shoot from the tree of David, the root of David will spring up. And so that's why they call their town Nazareth, means the village of the shoot, the village of the shoot. So these two th towns were saying, one of us, there is going to be the Messiah born. So they were waiting for this Messiah to come. And it's around maybe 100 AD. And Joseph's parents came from Babylon and they settled in this place. They also took up a, a, a different kind of uh, trades. And of course, Joseph was one who worked with um, uh, uh, either rocks or stone. It was, it, the word there is like a, for a, a construction worker, stone, rocks or wood. You know, and King Herod in his time had all kind of uh, projects going on. So perhaps Joseph was involved with that. And Joseph, later on, being a carpenter, working with stone or rock or, or wood, would teach his son the same trade. It would be passed on for all of the son. So they uh, went to this place called Nazareth. And, um, and, and here comes the angel Gabriel and he comes to this town of Nazareth. So of the two villages that was, had the root of David, that had the uh, family tree of King David, those two towns, it was the town of Nazareth that Angel Gabriel came to visit. And then um, it was, uh, and, and he came to, um, to the betrothed of man, he was to the of Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man. So they used the word there, virgin, it's uh, interesting that this word virgin we also see in the prophet Isaiah. And what does the prophet Isaiah say? He, he says to Isaiah, God says to Isaiah, I want you to go to King Azza. This is way back when, the, when Israel was still alive as a, as, a, as a country. Go to King Azza and tell him to ask me for a sign. That is, is far deep as Sheol and high as heaven itself. Ask me for a, an infinite sign, a spectacular sign, and I'll give it to you. And King Azza says, I won't you know, tempt the Lord. I'm not going to do that. So the Lord said to Isaiah, well, then I will give him a sign. And what is the sign? That a virgin will give birth and the son will be named Emmanuel. So this is, uh, some, some translations, it says, instead of a virgin gives birth, it says a young woman. But why do we say a, a virgin? Because if God is going to give a sign that's so infinite and so spectacular, it's not a very spectacular sign for a young woman to give birth. Most young women give birth, you know? So that's not a spectacular sign. But the spectacular sign is that a woman who is a virgin who has never known man, who has never been with a man, gives birth. That's a spectacular sign. So here we see in the scriptures it says there was a virgin. Hailful, uh, it says here, uh, to a virgin betrothed to a man. Okay, so a virgin betrothed to a man. So here we see this um, uh, 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 connection with Isaiah, that the Messiah, uh, it would be a vir born to a virgin, 
betrothed to a man. And here, Mary, you'll see, is a virgin betrothed to a man. The other word I like to look at is betrothed. Some people say, what does betrothed mean? And they'll say, well, betrothed, it means like you're uh, engaged or something like that. But betrothal does not mean engaged. It doesn't mean it's, it's far from that. There is, the marriage for the uh, Israelites was quite different than how we have our marriages today. What happens is that they would exchange vows. They would make a covenant with each other. And a covenant always is that if you're faithful, a covenant, covenant between each other, your marriage would be blessed. If you're unfaithful, well, then there is the covenant curses. We'll probably get into them another time. But there's the covenant curses if you're not faithful. Um, in fact, uh, uh, it's always like this. Whenever you had a, a covenant made with somebody, if you had a clan that is a warring clan or yet another clan that is uh, an agricultural clan, so they get together, the heads of both clans, they get together and they'll say, you know what, we'll protect you, but you feed us. So they make a, a pact with each other, make a covenant with each other. And what they would do is they would take an oxen, some kind of a, 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 a animal, and they would split it in half. And I, and I don't know if you've ever uh, seen a, 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 an animal split in half. I, I, when I was in my agriculture days at the University of Manitoba, um, one of the professors, he was a veterinarian, and he says, you know what, we've got to put down a horse. I want you guys to come in and see the anatomy of a horse. So we've got to study the anatomy of this horse. So he takes the, the, the horse, he stuns it with something, and, it, and it's strapped to a sideways table, and the hydraulics pushes the table you know, in this manner, and then he stretches out the legs, he takes a chainsaw, <laughs> and he saws it right down the middle, and he opens it up, and when he opens it up, the whole, the viscera was just like a, a bathtub of blood. So what happens is that when they would make a covenant, they would take this animal, open it up like that, and the two chieftains would stand in the middle. And they would stand in this pool of blood. And they said, this is our covenant with each other. If we respect this covenant, then may God bless us. If we do not respect this covenant, then let that what happened to this ox happen to us. That was a covenant. So may, you remember the, when you were a kid, you say, cross your heart, hope to die? <laughs> That's where that comes from. Crossing the heart means being quartered. You know, hope to die. Well, if you, if you tell a lie, then, then, then this is what happens to the oxen, happens to you. Right? So what happens is that they, they, they made a betrothal. So they made a covenant. Uh, Mary and Joseph made a covenant with each other. They were betrothed to each other. So they were already married. Betrothal does not mean engagement. It means you're already married. The vows were already taken. So then how come we see the two of them are kind of apart? Well, because the second part of the marriage is that the uh, wife would then go to her father's house. Of course, Mary and Joseph were both living in this little town of, Na of Nazareth. It was maybe one kilometer wide long, one half a kilometer wide. So they knew of each other. But what happens is once they're betrothed, the, the wife will then go to her father's house, stays there and lives there. And then the husband would go to um, his father's house. And what he would do in his father's house is he would prepare a room for his bride. The father's house was like, a, 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 what do you call it, an outside uh, area. It's kind of outdoors, fenced in, eight, nine, ten feet high, brick. And it's a kind of um, uh, enclosed, enclosement like that. And then you would have, uh, from one side you have a door, and behind there is a room. So that's the father's house. But this enclosure, there they would have a fire, they would cook their food, chickens would walk around, and all that kind of stuff. People would gather and eat there, right? When the, the father has a son, and he's going to get married, the, when the son gets married, then he goes and he builds another room on the other side for him and his wife. And the rooms are just a small little room. That's, that's the room. And then when he has another son, he gets married, they build another room. Remember the story how Jesus speaks about the kingdom of God? He says, in my father's house, there are many mansions. Not little rooms, but many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. 
so that where I am, you may be with me also. So Jesus sees himself as the groom, and he's the church as his bride. And when he's going to go to his Father's house in heaven, he's preparing a place for you. It's like this marriage covenant, this beautiful marriage kind of covenant. So Joseph, what he does after his, after, after his um, um, what do you call it, marriage, uh, betrothal, he goes to his father's house, and it takes maybe up to a year to build this house, this room for him and his wife. So he does that, and, and also his wife, Mary, stays and waits for him in her father's house. Remember that story about the five uh, wise virgins and the five foolish virgins, and they were waiting for the husband to come to take them to, their, to, to her home, the bride to, the, to her home. In fact, what happens is that the second part is once he finishes building the house, he goes and picks up his wife from her father's house. She never knows the time or date or place when, uh, or when he's going to be finished. So she's always waiting, right? He comes, he picks her up, he takes her, they make a procession with the, these uh, virgins that have these uh, little ca lit candles and uh, little lamps, lanterns, oil lanterns and they go to his house, and there they have a wedding that lasts for at least a week, week to 10 days. And there's a lot of joy there. In fact, remember when Jesus, when they ran out of wine, and Mary says they have no more wine. You know, why was the wine so important? Because the Lord is showing us the joy of heaven, and it doesn't run out. So he gives them this abundant wine, giving this foretaste of, of the joy of heaven. Remember, the 12, of the 10 uh, uh, virgins, five were wise and five were not. So they're waiting for the groom to come. And of course, the other five ran out of oil, right? And so they said to the ones that were wise ones that had oil in their lamps, is, well, give us some. And the, and the wise one says, no. <laughs> and of course, then what happens is the wise ones went into the uh, groom's home. They had this big banquet. But the other ones, when they came, they couldn't get in, right? So you often think about, you know, this is silly. Why, why, did they, why did they not share? You know, aren't they Christian? <laughs> why did they share the, the oil so they can all get into this, you know, heavenly banquet, this banquet and the bridal banquet? Why could not do that? Because what the Lord is showing us there is that the oil is our virtues. Our oil is a virtuous life. You cannot simply give somebody else your virtues. You need to come into heaven with your virtuous life shining and you enter into the kingdom of heaven so we see that um, uh, uh, Joseph he comes and he brings in his uh, wife into uh, later on into um, his home so he was they were betrothed so that means that they they were married right let's take a look at another part here so uh, the uh, the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary and he came to her, and this angel Gabriel, he came to Mary, and it said, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. And then later on he says, Do not be afraid. So the word, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you, do not be afraid. Those four points. Now, if you take a look um, at Zechariah, and I think it's Zephaniah, uh, those two prophets, if you take a look, yeah, Zephaniah and Zechariah, in the Old Testament, the Lord spoke to them in the same way. In fact, to uh, Zephaniah, it says this, chapter 3, verse 14. Uh, he says, Sing aloud, rejoice, O daughter of Zion, the King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall, you shall uh, fear uh, evil no more. So do not be afraid. So it's rejoice, O daughter of Zion. That's a name. That was a name for the... Um, the Israelites that were faithful, it's our faithful little remnant. So he called them this name. Rejoice, O faithful remnant. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst, so God is in your presence. You shall fear evil no more. Do not be afraid. And in Zechariah, the same thing. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he. So Mary, in the same, the same thing, when the angel Gabriel comes to her, he says, we say hail, right? We say in English, hail Mary, full of grace. But if you take a look at the Greek, it's not hail, but it's rejoice. In fact, when we say in Ukrainian, 
Bohorodice divo radiusia, rejoice. So the word, the greeting, so the greeting that Angel Gabriel comes to Mary is rejoice. With that, it means that she's telling uh, Mary to rejoice. Why? Uh, uh, oh, daughter of King, it's because the, uh, the Lord is coming, the Messiah is coming. You know, rejoice because the Messiah is coming. And the Lord is in your, is in your midst. So rejoice signifies that the Messiah, Messianic era is coming. So with that greeting, Mary is aware of this. Okay, the Messiah is coming. Then it says, full of grace. Full of grace, it's a new name that she's been given. It didn't say, Angel Gabriel didn't say, uh, rejoice Mary. It says, rejoice full of grace. So anytime you're given a new name in Scripture, you've been given a different mission, a new mission. So now the angel is saying, okay, rejoice. You're now being given, given a new mission. Rejoice, full of grace. Full of grace in Greek is kekaratomene, kekaratomene. And Greek, when you say kekaratomene, it means that um, it, it, it has like a, a beginning, from the beginning, and in the present, and in the future. So it says something like this, it's a verb. So we said, like say if you're having a, a, a race with cars. So you could say this fellow was winning at the very beginning, he is presently winning, and he wins at the end. So what happens is saying that Mary was filled with grace at the beginning, is presently filled with grace, and we filled with grace to the end. Right? We see in English another place where it says full of grace is, remember uh, St. Stephen? St. Stephen preached the word to, to the people, and they're, uh, they're, as they were stoning him, because they were so angry at him, it says Stephen was full of grace when he said these words. So if you take a look at the word full of grace there, it's not kekaratomene, but it's pluris caris, full of grace. So it means pluris caris means for that moment, at that instant, he was filled with the grace of God. Mary was filled with grace for Mary. And that's why we call her uh, sinless, ever sinless, ever pure. Then the Lord said, uh, then the angel says, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. And if you look at the Old Testament, this is exactly what the Lord said to Jacob. He says, the Lord is with you. I will not leave you. To Moses, I will be with you. To Joshua, I will be with you. King David, I have been with you. So this uh, confirmation that the Lord will be with you, it means that this new mission that Mary is going to be given, she's going to need God's help, and he'll be there with her. Right? So she needs, she'll be needing God's help, and he'll be there with her. And it says that Mary was troubled with the saying. Mary was not troubled that she saw an angel, because we know in other texts where uh, Mary had conversations with angels all her life. Um, and, uh, and so anyway, so Mary was not troubled with the angels being there, but was uh, troubled at the saying, you know? She, and it says that she considered in her mind what sort of greeting this was. She was having a dialogue in her head. What does this mean? And she's thinking to herself, rejoice. That word is whenever, whenever they spoke about the Messiah coming. So the Messiah is going to come. Then the angel says, full of grace. I've been given a new name. I'm going to be given a special mission. And then the Lord is with you. That means this special mission I'm going to be given is going to be really difficult. And then finally, the third thing the angel Gabriel said to her is, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid of the special mission that I'm going to give you. And then it says, it says, you have found favor with God. You have found favor with God. This phrase also means that God has chosen this person for a very special reason. We know when they, God chose Noah, he says God had found favor with Noah. With Abraham, it says God had found favor with Abraham. God had found favor with Moses. God had found favor also with Mary. So just as these great saints of the Old Testament had a great mission, so too now Mary is going to be having a great mission. She doesn't know what the mission is yet, but she's now aware this is what's going to happen, this is what's going on. This is what the angel Gabriel was telling her. So then finally, the angel Gabriel tells Mary what her mission is going to be. 
And the angel Gabriel says this, You will conceive and bear a son. The Lord will give to him the throne of his father David. He will be the Messiah. So that's her mission. She's going to conceive and bear a son. And Mary says to the angel, How can this be since I have no husband? Why did she say that? How can this be since I have no husband? We just spent the first half of our talk speaking that she's betrothed, she is married. So something seems fishy here. Well, if you look at the Greek, it doesn't say I have no husband. And that's where so many people get mixed up. It doesn't say I have no husband, but it says I know not a man. I know not a man. Very different from saying I have no husband. What does it mean I know not a man? It means that she's not having any marital relationships with a man. Well, yeah, they're betrothed, they're living in different houses, but if Mary's married to Joseph, sooner or later she's going to have marital relationship with her, so we think, and she would have a child. So how, how come she says, how can this be? How come Mary says, how can this be? You mean she doesn't know th that they're going to have, how to have children? You know, that doesn't make any sense. But what does make sense is this. When she says, I know not a man, it means that she had had already made a vow of perpetual virginity. And she would have told Joseph before they got married, I want to be a virgin all my life. And Joseph was there to take care of her. Is this so strange? Not really. There were, at that time, a group of people known as the Essenes. They practiced a virginity, and women too. And if we know from the name Joseph of the Old Testament, remember Joseph of the Old Testament? You know, this Potiphar, the Pharaoh's wife, she wanted to have her way with, with uh, Joseph. He was young and strong and that, and he ran away. He says, no, this is the Pharaoh's wife. And he kept the Pharaoh's wife pure, right? So here we see also, Joseph sees that Mary wants to keep this vow of perpetual virginity. That's why she asked, how can this be? I, I, how can God want me not to keep a vow? I, I made a vow of perpetual virginity. How can he make me want not to keep it? You know? He says, I know not a man. Joseph would have known this when they got married. So then the angel replies, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you. Where have we heard that before? Remember when Moses made the Ark of the Covenant, and in the Ark of the Covenant, they had the manna bread in there, they had the Ten Commandments there, the Staff of Aaron there, and they carried it with the priests, and when they had it there, there was a huge uh, cloud of smoke during the day, and the presence of God, this holy presence of God would be there, and at nighttime, it would be replaced with this huge pillar of fire, the holy presence of God overshadowing the Ark of the Covenant. And so it says here, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. So now Mary is the new Ark of the Covenant. The Holy Spirit is now going to overshadow you and what it's going to do. And the child is like a pillar of smoke, overshadow you, and the child will be born with the Son of God. It won't, she still will keep her perpetual virginity because no man is going to have uh, relations with her and that way she can still have this this child and she says there'll be proof of this is that you go see your kinswoman Elizabeth Elizabeth she's now six months pregnant of course she knew her kinswoman Elizabeth she was an old old woman and he says nothing will be impossible for God nothing's going to be impossible for God so what does Mary say Behold, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. Behold, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. What's a handmaiden? In the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 12 to 17, what happens, it says this. When, say, for example, you couldn't pay your bills or whatever, and uh, so this a Jewish man would say, okay, so what you've got to do is you've got to work for me, be my slave, and by working for me for free, uh, you're going to pay off your debt, right? So what happens is he comes in and he works for this man, and uh, that way he can pay off his debt. 
but he could not be longer, any longer than uh, seven years a slave. He could only be six years. They had to have already released him. So the seven years, you couldn't have him longer than seven years as a slave. So when it was seven years are up, then the, uh, the, uh, the man in charge would give him food, uh, goats, uh, animals, uh, provisions, uh, gold, whatever he needs, so he could start up with his wife and family or wherever he may be, somewhere else, right? But what would happen sometimes is that the person that's living with this man and his family get to really love this fe fellow and the family and, the, and wants to be like a, a part of the family. And they don't want to leave that man and his, uh, his household. So what happens is then, uh, the man would then do this. He would take a little wooden peg and he would put it on the person's earlobe like this. And they, he'd bring him to the door of his house and he'd take a, a, a little hammer and he'd punch this peg through the earlobe of the, of the person. A little drop of blood would come out. And then this person, because of that act, he would be, remain as a slave forever for that master. Some chose to remain as slaves forever. And that's how they did that. So a man who had this done and stayed in that household and worked with them because he felt like there was like his family there, uh, he, he was a slave. A woman that had that done was known as a handmaiden. A handmaiden. What does Mary say to the angel? She says, Behold, I am a handmaiden of the Lord. I'm a handmaiden of the Lord. I am totally dedicated to our Lord. And then she says, let, me, let it be to me according to your word. And with that, the angel departed from her. And this is why I really love uh, when we have our ikonostas. I'll make a few things, a few references to it. Where do we see the Annunciation? We see it right here. Mary is here, and the uh, angel Gabriel is on this side. And I was used to wonder, why is it that they have Mary on one door and the archangel Gabriel on the next door? Why is that? Until I read again the scriptures. And he says, you know, let it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. When we start the divine liturgy, it can't happen unless Mary says yes. When she says yes, then the, Mary, then the liturgy can start. When she says yes, the angel departs from her. I don't know if it opens from this side. The angel departs from her. So the angel goes back this way and Mary goes this way. And you see the angel departing from Mary. She is then, she then is conceived and she in the cave, the sanctuary is a cave. And she gives birth to Jesus in the cave. We see this cave also as a second cave is when we take the gifts from the side and we bring it and, they, and of course when we have the proscomedia table we have the this piercing of the of the, the body the pouring of the blood and, the, and it's symbolically because it's not consecrated we make this procession and we take this you might say dead body of Christ symbolically and we place him put him inside the cave for his burial where he rises from the dead and comes out and he gives us himself as a resurrected Lord so we can receive him. Tomorrow I'll con continue on with this uh, talk about the Annunciation. We'll go into a little bit more of the uh, visitation when Mary uh, visits uh, Elizabeth. Thank you very much, Father. Uh, just, a, just a word about what's happening. Of course, uh, again, if uh, someone still wanted to take opportunity for confession today, just speak to one of the, the fathers and we'll, we'll do our best to accommodate you. Otherwise, tomorrow there'll, there'll be another opportunity. Tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock, we also meet back here for the Festal Divine Liturgy for the Feast of the Annunciation. So we'll have the Divine Liturgy and also there'll be a, an opportunity for, for confessions and also Father will pre-preach um, the, the exciting uh, conclusion of his... Um, uh, Lenten mission, and so do you, you, won't, you won't want to be here for this. Uh, of course, also just a word in the morning uh, at 10 o'clock, 
the Metropolitan uh, Lawrence will be here, Archbishop Stefan, other clergy and, and faithful. And so I think it's a big enough church we can accommodate everyone. If not, if it can be just like in Ukraine where we have thousands of people gathered around the church, God willing, it would be fantastic. But uh, so 10 o'clock, and of course, we'll have our ceremony here our, and, and the Metropolitan will lead us in a, in a prayer and a blessing and a consecration as is the intention, as was mentioned earlier, of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, uh, of uh, Ukraine and Russia uh, to the Mother of God. And so we'll have a special service here. We'll also have some refreshments downstairs. We'll also then link up with the events that are happening in Rome and Fatima. So please, uh, tomorrow at 10 o'clock, you're more than welcome to come for that as well. So you can make it like a whole a part of your Lenten mission, uh, a whole day of spiritual renewal coming here. In the, uh, we'll have also 8 o'clock Divine Liturgy, 8 o'clock Divine Liturgy for, um, uh, for those uh, who really can't make it in, in, in the evening, but I would hope that you could. Uh, and that's, maybe that's it for now. Just, but do come down. Right now there is some fresh refreshments downstairs. The ladies prepared wonder, wonderful things as they always do. And we're grateful, so do come down for some coffee and tea and, and some refreshments before you go home today. Maybe share some of your inspirations from this talk this evening. And otherwise we'll see you tomorrow. Slava Jesus Christ. Slava Jesus Christ. Just before we go, you know, just let us conclude. I just want to take, get the prayer here. I'm sure you're all doing this on your own, but just the, the prayer for the, uh, uh, the, the novena in preparation for the consecration tomorrow. And we have the short novena prayer. So just as where you are, just pray it along with me. Um, and, as, uh, and, and listen to the prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 158.